Ivy. And I'm Haley. And welcome to our how to play video of Pride, Prejudice and Practical Magics, an expansion adding a magical backdrop to Regency Society for the tabletop role-playing game Good Society, a Jane Austen RPG. This expansion adds spellcasting rules and factions into the game. In this video, we will be going through the main rule changes between Base Good Society and this expansion, as well as going through a little two-player play example, uh, where we'll be covering the new magical collaboration, as well as building our world and factions. We will be assuming that you are familiar with the general rules and concepts of Good Society. So if you're not familiar with those things, we've got a video for that, that you can go and watch now and come back to this one after. When gathering your group to play for the very first time, you'll be doing regular collaboration first with all the usual question that entails. After that, you'll be adding on the new magical collaboration. So today we've already done our regular collaboration. We've decided to play with the drama tone, historical accuracy a little important, gender norms off, and no hidden information. So the first question is what does magic look like? There are three options to choose from, so is there one that speaks to you? Hmm, I do like swirling, tactile, aromatic, and lingering. <laughs> Alright, so let's mark that one. The second question is, what does magic require? I think it requires songs, gestures, prayers, and offerings. I like it. The next thing to do is to allow each player a moment to narrate a vignette about a famous act of magic in this world. So. Haley, would you like to kick us off with one? There is a, a very old woman, uh, a master painter. You can see that she is sick and she's not able to travel, but she still wants to continue her art. So we see her take out, like she's got her brushes laid out before her and she's got her palette laid out before her. Um, but the paints look like they have something a bit different about them. I think they're in motion. They're swirling constantly as they are swirling around on the palette. She picks up a paintbrush and she dabs it in the paint and makes a gesture before her. And to our eye, it looks like nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But then we transition over into the inside of a cathedral <laughs> and we can see that the a, like a, a broad, huge brushstroke is being painted over the top of the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And there's an audience <laughs> sitting at the bottom of the cathedral watching this master painter in action. In my vignette, I think it starts with a couple who are preparing a nursery. And they've been hanging up um, dried herbs of various smells, a bit of thyme, you can smell lavender. The crib is painted lilac. The child is being placed into this bassinet um, that's adorned with all of these herbs. The couple starts singing. It's a low and beautiful harmony that crests. And as it crests, like we, we feel the air change and move and almost materializing out of nowhere is this like golden egg. As they sing, it like builds itself up. And as it crystallizes, it also disappears. And um, they pick up the baby, now protected by this charm, and bounce it on their knee. Cute. Yeah. Once every player has finished narrating a vignette about an act of magic, we have just a few more questions to go on with. And the next question is, uh, what presence do magical beings have here? Uh, do you have a preference? I feel like they don't often enter our social circles. The next question that we have to answer is, what are the old-fashioned and emerging attitudes to magic? And there is a list of sayings, um, and we'll be assigning one to be the old-fashioned attitude and one that is the new emerging attitude to magic in society. So I think for the old-fashioned attitude to magic, we should consider this one. There's no such thing as a mm -hmm. free spell. Uh, so maybe in this world, like, you know, that charm that I described as a famous act of magic, someone, they, they that couple actually holds the rights oh, I to love that, that spell. And so, you know, you can use the spell, but you would need to get their either monetary or approval to mm -hmm. use the spell, something like that. Great, so magic is kind of very tightly controlled, controlled. <laughs> but through ownership rather mm -hmm. than regulation. Mm -hmm. So in that case, a good choice for the emerging attitude might be 
the magics help those who help themselves. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, that represents the idea that while these spells may be owned by people and may be costly to use, there is always the opportunity for imitation, Mm -hmm. innovation, (laughs) cheap knockoffs, (laughs) basically... Anything you can do to make it work. Mm-hmm. If it works, it works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. So then that just leaves what factions will appear in this game. There are four different factions in this game. The College of Wizardry, the Hidden Order, the Otherworldly, and the Local Witches Association. There's also a fifth faction that was unlocked as part of the Kickstarter, the Oracular Matchmakers Network. In this game, these factions will be fighting for influence and authority. When you pick your two factions, you also place the corresponding faction sheets on the table. For this game, we've chosen the Otherworldly and the College of Wizardry. So the College of Wizardry is used in every game and they represent the institution. So they are traditional, hierarchical, politically influential and grandiose. We will also be playing with the Otherworldly, a faction of strange, unfathomable, magical beings. um, And they are unpredictable, enticing, powerful and knowing. Factions have desires just like major characters do. Facilitators can choose faction desires or use the ones suggested in the playset they are playing. In this game, the desires we'll be playing with are for the College of Wizardry, find the traitor in your faction, Mm. and for the otherworldly, lift your faction out of disrepute. Factions also have influence and depending on their score, fall into three broad categories, disgraced, neutral, and authoritative. They will also have a specific descriptor, such as official, feared, or right, depending on these influence levels. During reputation, these influence scores will change. A faction's influence level and descriptor represent how it is perceived by society. Factions also may make decrees, but we will talk about that more in the reputation phase. With that, let's move on to backstory. Backstory proceeds as usual as in good society, with characters having a desire, relationship, character role, and family background. However, as you make your characters, you may elect for them to be part of a faction. For this game, I've prepared a playset. So, Haley, would you read your desire and relationship? Yes. So, my desire is to marry my secret fiancé, and my relationship is cursed and cursor. The giver's family wronged, humiliated, or ruined the life of the taker of this card. And in return, the taker placed a curse on them. Mm. For mine, my desire is restore your reputation and be forgiven by your former friend. And the relationship card is parent and child. So since we're just two people, should we use just the one relationship card? Yeah, I think so. That's probably right. Let's use the parent and child one. That that sounds great. We'll put that in the middle here. Okay. So your character role is the dowager, Mm -hmm. and I'm playing the heir. So it makes sense for me to be your child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. Let's take a moment now to flesh out our own characters and create one connection each. So let me introduce you to Veldren Hugh, uh, 62. She's a dowager and also the head of the College of Wizardry. Mm. Uh, she wears very tasteful fashions, but true to her name, uh, they are garishly colored, very eye-catching, um, as her temperament is generally quite severe and hardworking. Recently, I, as the head of the College of Wizardry, was working with the Vice Chancellor on a huge spell to create a new building on the premises and there was a terrible accident which led to the unfortunate demise of my friend there's a rumor that i'll be dismissed over what happened there but it was it was truly an accident so i i want to be forgiven by my former friend caldwell um bloom is currently a ghost like wandering among us does he does he still make calls for um yeah so that's my connection here our connection is horatio who is a medium um and caldwell's son Mm -hmm. and uh so horatio is helping me bridge the spiritual gap Mm. in our relationship i see so (laughs) you've got to come up with the goods to bridge the emotional gap yes exactly (laughs) i love that that's great so my character is demetrius hugh son of veldrin Mm -hmm. he is 28 years old he is the heir to the family fortune Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in his mind also the heir to the college of wizardry Mm. um, position 
although that is not official. He is a neat, gentle, and soft boy. He is kindly, but he is indulgent. He doesn't always know when he ought to step in, and he's been indulging his mother for his entire lifetime. Mm, I see. Um, or so he thinks. His mother probably thinks she's been indulging him, given that he is not a very tasteful chap mm -hmm. and doesn't necessarily appear in the best light at parties. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, his negative reputation tag is tasteless. Oh, good. So that must be a great disappointment to Belgian. But um, his positive reputation tag is dependable. Mm -hmm. And I think he has always been there doing the right things, saying the right things until three years ago when he fell in love with Your connection. my connection, mm -hmm. uh, Kit, who is the head of the Otherworldly and also the heir to the Fey Kingdom. I think he's a prince, mm -hmm. which is why he's the head of the faction. Just to tell you a little about Kit, he is hedonistic, impulsive, and generous. So exactly what you'd want in the head of a faction. <laughs> Very sensible. That is the man I fell in love with, despite myself. <laughs> so the Otherworldly faction is currently in disrepute. Mm -hmm. They're trying to lift themselves out, out of disrepute. Out yeah. of disrepute. And in that sense, Demetrius is a very good connection for Kit to make. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that he is utterly, totally in love with Kit and wants to make their secret engagement formal mm -hmm. is also a big problem for his ambitions because he wants to be the head of the College of Wizardry and he wants to be the heir that Veldrin wants him to be. Mm -hmm. So I'll be playing Kit and you'll be playing Horatio. Yes. The other last thing that we, we have to do is to just resolve this um, faction desire for the College of Wizardry, which mm -hmm. has a traitor. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could read us the bottom of that card. Yes. And if there is no hidden information in use, we decide who the traitor is together. Yeah. So... I think it's Demetrius. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like he's an unwitting traitor in the sense that he can't keep secrets from Kit. How about if there's like a very old, very important book of... Um, spells mm -hmm. um it's like a, probably a really old ballad right yeah. with like multiple spells mm -hmm. it's their main money making source yeah it's the cash cow yeah and like so, a lot of the secrets of it is being like kept in that book right maybe demetrius is helping kit make knockoff spells yeah that have been circulating almost the same but a little bit yeah. different and it's yeah. like you need intimate knowledge that kind of uh secrets don't just come out like yeah that. Like that. someone needed to have access to these that's things, great so. After backstory, we choose the leaders of each faction if that hasn't been established mm -hmm. yet. In this case, we have established those. Mm -hmm. So we'll just write them on the sheets mm -hmm. who's in each faction and who the leaders of each faction. Great. Um, so is Horatio a member of the college? I think so, yeah. In the faction influence section of the College of Wizardry, we will note their starting score at two, mm -hmm. which is authoritative. And we'll be choosing um, a description that we want for that. Mm -hmm. So of the three there. So our options are official, feared, or right. Yes. I feel like official might work very well. So official means that the faction is endorsed by the crown and has the power of the state mm. behind it. Yep. And maybe they pay royalties to the crown and that's part of how the college stays on top because the crown requires college spells to be used in government mm, circumstances yeah, yeah, yeah. and the college pays royalty to the crown. Yeah. It's one lovely yeah. circle. Yeah. For the other faction, whichever one's being used, they ordinarily start with zero, which is mm -hmm. neutral. However, because the otherworldly have the disrepute desire, that instruction is that the faction starts at disgraced. Mm -hmm their laws and society is just too, so alien and totally different systems to uh, the insular mm -hmm. society that we have here. And that's kind of like why they haven't, like they're a bit seen as kind of like on the fringe. So clearly that like worries society as yeah. a whole. Part of the concern currently mm -hmm. that's circulating is that the otherworldly faction just appeared and they haven't like mm -hmm. earned any trust. And because they're so alien and there's a lot of old wives tales mm -hmm. about you know, rumors about them as mm -hmm. well that it, it makes people like still untrusting of mm -hmm. the otherworldly faction. So like maybe they just literally appeared. Yeah. Like they weren't there and then one day they literally appeared. Like yeah. maybe four or five years ago. Is that not suspicious? <laughs> yeah. So that wraps us up for backstory and now we're ready for the first novel chapter. Mm -hmm. So this is our first novel chapter. Um, I think it's going to be an event chapter set uh, during something called the Echoing of the Halls, which is uh, near the start of the College of Wizardry's um, year, calendar year, 
uh, the grand old halls of the college need to be re-echoed. So you have to sing a loud song that will echo for the whole mm-hmm. of the year and officially open it as a place of learning for this year. Mm-hmm. So it's usually, it's quite a important affair. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone, all the big wigs of the College of Wizardry are there. Um, Can I straight up use make a suggestion to use your weak reputation tag? <laughs> of course. Because I would like, my suggestion or my offer to you is that Ordinarily, Veldrum would be a central part yes. of this song. Yes. However, this year, they have put someone else to sing Veldrum's section <gasps> with her. Just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that. Like, that it's... Yeah. I, I'll take that. All I'll right. Take so you get the token for that, and your reputation tag gets crossed right off. Yeah. And I I think it's ostensibly to Honor Caldwell, so I think Horatio is singing in uh, ah. memoriam and in... Coldwell's like memory and but actually everyone knows it's to make sure that like everyone is kind of worried about the weak weakness of my magic and so they're trying to make sure that things are done properly. Jumping into this scene I think that let, let's start with our characters um, right before. I feel like because we're old-fashioned we're in a carriage but the carriage isn't pulled by mortal horses <laughs> instead the coachman is just there with his little book and he's just like singing his way through the streets mm. as the carriage is being pulled mm. by none of that is seen from the inside of the carriage where we are deep in conversation yes you are <clears throat> deep in conversation demetrius is looking out the window demetrius that tie is a questionable choice as an ascot mother ah well perhaps it is did you bring another Demetrius opens a satchel that's slung all around the seat of the carriage and says, Yes, mother, I brought two alternatives for your perusal. And he pulls out two. Two ascorts, one as bad as the other. On <laughs> second thoughts, perhaps what you're wearing is fine. Hmm. And Demetrius looks like he expected Veldrin to come to this conclusion and puts the ascorts back in the satchel. <laughs> Mother, you're not worried, are you? What would I have to worry about? About Horatio singing your part with you. I think she falls silent and kind of like glances out the window as we see um, the college kind of come into view. There's not much more that the college could do to ensure Horatio is a wonderful spell singer. It's just immemorial, you know. Who else but Horatio to sing with me, to honour my greatest friend? Demetrius nods solemnly, but he is reading his mother's face. A fleeting look of insecurity about herself kind of crosses her face. She believes that the college sort of could be right about this decision. She's Mm. like questioning herself. But I think that in this moment of weakness, when she realises you're looking at her, she says... And this is for compelling your character okay. to do what um, Veldrin is about to say. Mm-hmm. Demetrius, tonight is traditionally the night that future chancellors of the College of Wizardry announce their intention mm. and seriousness to be so. I myself, some <laughs> must be 18 years ago now, on this, on this very night of the echoing of the hall, did put my name forward to be involved in the leadership of the college. Demetrius nods like he's heard this story many times before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is like, you will put your name in, won't you? What exactly does it involve, putting your name forward? Do you have to stand there publicly and and sing it? I think you... At the end of the song? Or is there some other way that it's done? A mirror or a wall or like a bowl of water and then like your name comes out. I like the idea of a mirror and maybe the names appear on the edge of the mirror. And maybe Mm -hmm. all you have to do is stare at the mirror and say the prayer that is in your head. Mm. So people don't even necessarily see you do the act, but Mm -hmm. then your name appears. Mm -hmm. It's like a grand mirror that is in the entrance hall. Entrance hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this. Cool. So yes, I accept. Will you let the mirror know your of your intentions, son? 
Demetrius's eyes grow wide. <laughs> and he says, it is to be decided soon, then. Sooner than you think. And then she, she gives you a strained smile. And Demetrius, hmm, behave yourself this evening. There are a lot of interesting and important people tonight. I am ready, mother. And Demetrius sits upright in his seat in the carriage and he pulls his very unfashionable waistcoat into <laughs> alignment. <laughs> and as you catch your uh, like reflection in the mirror, you, you feel like you could see a bit, like, a bit of Kit's uh, winning smile reflecting back at you and winking at you. Mm -hmm. And Demetrius <laughs> smiles right back at him. <laughs> So should we do, um, should we see a bit of Veldrin and Horatio now? Horatio and Veldrin have been seated together in, in the, um, I, th I imagine it like there's a big, long. Mm, and stable. everyone else is like spaced apart. Yeah. But they're right next to each other. Yeah. So Veldrin catches Horatio's eye and Horatio's, so Horatio's a medium, obviously. I don't think I can see Coldwell's spirit. But I know that you speak for Call of the Spirit, and that's been recently uh, affirmed by the college. Horatio and Caldwell also look strikingly alike. Like, Horatio mm -hmm. just looks like Caldwell looked 20 years ago. Mm. It, it catches her off guard every single time she sees Horatio. I think Horatio takes his seat. Madame Hugh. It will be a pleasure to sing together. Horatio, of course. I know that my father sings with us. I think she looks shocked at that and says he would sing with me. He sings with the college, for he still considers himself to have a place here that ought to be known. And while, as a spirit, his voice cannot bolster the song, it is nevertheless a part of the singing. His song has never really left my heart, and I think she's playing with a bracelet that was given to her a long time ago by a young Coldwell. You feel a wave of thickness in the air wash over you. And Horatio moves just like a slight amount, like making space for someone else. <laughs> you know, like kind of like moving aside. Yeah. Horatio says this kind of like there's somebody listening to you that he's trying to like speak without being heard by, <laughs> even though Belgium can't see anyone. Yeah. He's like conspiratorially. You ought to talk to him, you know. Uh, he wouldn't want to speak to me. He may be more willing than you think, provided you come with the right sentiments and heart. Horatia, you're a kind soul. But iniquity was never part of Caldwell or my own vocabulary. Iniquity was a sin we both scoffed at. One cannot just forget such things. One does not need to forget to have amends made to them. And I, indeed, for one, hope that Cord will not be forgotten. At this point, there's some, some yes, like, now we must scuffle, rise. and there's, there's like, uh, some spotlight. And um, Veldrin says, in such a spirit of remembering, we shall sing the echoing together. And I think that uh, this part that Veldrin sings starts the song. Mm. And so usually you just hear Veldrin's voice, mm. but in this case you hear two voices singing in tandem. Mm. What's the character of Veldrin's voice like? Okay, typically Veldrin is known for like a clear soprano mm -hmm. that is tight. And so the problem is like when you have such a um, loud and pure sound, any like trembles in it, is very audible. audible and very um, noticeable, right? I think that she sings and it, and the first note wavers. But I feel yeah. like it finds a steady pitch yeah. as Horatio sort of like low rumbling yeah. cuts in underneath. Is there any no like noticeable, perceptible change in the room or the mm. college as this well, begins? Well, let us jump into some spellcasting rules mm. here. In this game, uh, if you are... Reading magic that is not significant to the story, um, you can freely describe that. So if you want magical blue lights to appear, that's fine. <laughs> if you are using magic 
in a way that is significant to the story. Like in this case, we're very interested in whether this succeeds yes. or not because there's a lot of personal character stakes. Yes. Then you consult the Table of Magics. And in the Table of Magics, there are two options. You can either pay a resolve token, which will mean your magic is successful and resolves more or less as intended, or you can choose to take a resolve token, mm -hmm. in which case your magic has a significant drawback or complication to it. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, as we both singing, I think, do I actually want to succeed <laughs> and resolve? <laughs> I think so. And mm -hmm. I think um, I will pay, so I will choose to pay a resolve token mm -hmm. to uh, have my magic be successful and resolves mm -hmm. more and or less as intended. In this case being still the duet. Like I think in the context of that, I want it to succeed. Yes. So the player of the magic's target or the facilitator of there is no target, in this case, chooses one question to answer. There is no target because it's kind of about the whole university. So I, this, as a facilitator, can choose one of these, but it's no fun. So why don't you choose <laughs> one for me? I think the question, and it's very appropriate here, is who helps you and what do they demand of you? I think that it is not Caldwell who helps me, right? I think that it is actually Horatio. That makes sense. Caldwell's a bit, a little bit upset. Yeah, I, Caldwell is upset. And I think that Horatio's voice is actually the one that I hear. And, and I, I know Caldwell so well that like I hear his voice and uh, like singing. It's like three of us singing mm -hmm. together, right? But I can feel him not putting the energy into it. Like I can feel the magical energy isn't there. And I could see that it's Horatio's deep booming voice that is holding up this entire echo mm -hmm. we kind of sing this beautifully and the song ends and he says this is in memory of my father may he finally re may he rest in peace um and he i think he looks at me when he says that and i know that he's asking me to help him mm -hmm. lay his father's spirit to rest i love that that's yeah. great so Haley, what do you want to see of Demetrius at this echoing? Yes, well Demetrius needs to commune with this mirror <laughs> towards the end of the evening. He's been thinking about it all night and mm -hmm. I think he's been watching other names carve themselves around the edge of the mirror. Mm -hmm. Not too many, maybe two or three. Names of people he's familiar with from his youth. Names of people he thinks may well be superior candidates to himself. But... What he promised to do, he must do. He walks to the very back of the room and then turns to the mirror so his own reflection in it is almost out of sight mm. because it's so far away. Mm, and people are walking and by. And people are walking by. by. Yeah. We see reflected in the mirror far away a man gazing intently. <laughs> um, and I would like to receive a resolve token mm. for this magic to have a significant drawback That's fun. or complication. How is the effect of this act of magic completely different to that intended. Hmm. We've already introduced the idea of Kit appearing in mirrors. Yes. I wonder if in the shot that I mentioned before we see this reflection of the intense looking man transform into Kit <laughs> and they kind of like speak through the mirror. Mm. You see your own intense reflection and then like a, a waiter comes by with a tray of hors d'oeuvres and when you're you know, when that passes, you see it's Kit's um, reflection looking back at you and then looking around and then looking back at you and walking towards you. And you're walking towards the mirror yes, too, right? Yes, that Demetrius starts walking towards the mirror and that's what creates the, the appearance of Kit walking towards him. Yeah. And I think they communicate without talking out loud. Mm -hmm. The mirror is the medium for that communication. Mm -hmm. And Demetrius says in his head to Kit, what are you doing here? What a lovely little place. You like what you've done with it. You shouldn't be here, Kit. You shouldn't be in this mirror. Why ever not? All mirrors are my domain. But this is the mirror of the college. This mirror determines who will lead. Ah, one set of rules for you, one set of rules for me. I think Demetrius at this point has walked across the whole room and is standing next to the mirror and i think he reaches out and puts his hand on the mirror which you're not supposed to do mm -hmm. but it connects with kit's hand mm. so my question is when it connects does it feel like cold mirror or does it feel like living flesh it feels like 
where it's uh, static electricity is what you know like when you mm-hmm. when you you touch someone but there's like tss, like a, a jolt but then it feels like it's it's kit's hand so then i think demetrius says you're really here if i'm here and i'm there do you want to write this together then kit's hand and your hand are like this right on the mirror yeah like it moves up towards one side of the gilded um frame where the names are being written yeah and i think demetrius says what what are we going to write why didn't you want to write your own name on this mirror isn't that why we're here i suppose so so what does this look like how did they write this together I like the idea that it's Demetrius's name, but it's written in Faye's script. (laughs) I think the same thing happens with this as with every other name, which is that for a moment it glows in a golden hue and then it insets into the mirror like it has been carved. Mm -hmm. And I think Demetrius is surprised to see the script that he doesn't write or read or understand. But he just knows that it's his own name. Yeah. You hear Kit sounding it out as he's writing it it's a beautiful name looks even better in uh Faye. when will i see you next when will we meet are you not inviting me to meet your family is that not where we are at uh i can't be waiting forever yes but it won't be this evening mm-hmm. okay if that's still good yeah way. that's i think demetrius like makes a gesture which is like a barrier with his hands mm-hmm. over the mirror i think the magical effect of that is to create a barrier so kit cannot step outside mm. of the mirror into the hall i'll pay a result token for that uh so you need to ask me a question because you are the, how, the target of the result how token. does a faction take an interest in or exception to your actions demetrius's name being written in face script might not have been immediately discovered had he not cast <laughs> a spell on the mirror uh, on the mirror at that exact moment mm. Just resolve the spell first. I think it's just a simple gesture. And he sort of runs his hands down the side of a mirror. And it creates a barrier. And he says to Kit, not now. Who knows what would happen if you stepped out. I'll call for you on the morrow. I swear it. Kit's reflection finally breaks from the general movement. Because I think it's been copying you. Yeah. Um, to almost it in, at this moment almost feels like it had been copying you just for fun mm. and now breaks free of that and kind of blows a kiss at you and then recede and, and then recedes behind another person and it's back to your reflection i think demetrius kind of like sighs at like partly with relief partly with you know hashtag yearning <laughs> and uh and he turns around and then that's when he notices yeah, that a gaggle is of wizard college <laughs> at his name written in Fae script on the mirror, and I think most people there can't read Fae script, but somebody points in as like that's the name of Demetrius. <laughs> Another Hugh. Mm, how does Veldrin yeah. react to this? Oh, very good. Veldrin looks at the hubbub, looks at you, looks at the mirror, looks back at you, and then turns and walks away. And I will monologue token you. Demetrius is like so overwhelmed by the situation that he's almost calm. You know when you're so panicked <laughs> that your mind can't help but be calm because you just can't feel the panic of the situation. Mm-hmm. There goes mother. Well, I suppose you are not the only one, mother, who can make waves, who can let buildings collapse and set tongues wagging. I haven't the heart for this today. My heart is somewhere else. Therefore, let them say what they will for now. There's no sense standing here and being made a fool of. I may as well make my appeal to the only one who matters. And I think he takes after his mother. Mm. I think we will leave that novel Mm. chapter there for now and move on to the reputation phase. Okay. So, the reputation phase we will determine our reputation as usual with our family background and whether we go positive or negative mm-hmm. so let's do that quickly first yes poor poor demetrius <laughs> i think he's going to definitely get ding there for acting in contravention to society's conventions yep and or shaming and embarrassing the family name <laughs> and or acting on a desire in a way that compromised his duty or yes, morality. All of all those. All three? Yep. I think the tag he's going to get is 
What's a word for when you're under under someone else's influence or control? Ooh, enthralled, enticed, entranced. Enthralled is enthralled nice. is good. Yes, I don't think this is necessarily true, but it's certainly what people are thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For me, I don't necessarily feel that I got one or the other. Mm-hmm. The next part of reputation, there's two new sections to this for Pride, Prejudice and Practical Magics. The first, like I mentioned before, is about the faction influence, whether that's going up and down. And the second is whether decrees are proposed or made. The first thing we do is calculate any changes to the faction's influence. First, we have to tally up the faction influence scores based on what happened in that Mm -hmm. reputation phase. So... Determining the members, um, whether they've gained a positive reputation or negative reputation, and whether the leader acted in accordance with society's conventions and expectations, or whether they acted in contravention to those things. Mm -hmm. So we'll add up um, for each of those things a plus one or minus one, and depending on whether the number you get at the end is a plus or a minus, you go up one or Mm -hmm. or down one on the faction influence score. Well, in this case, Demetrius got a negative reputation tag, so that would count as a minus one. Yep, and Veldrin didn't get either. However, Veldrin did act publicly in uh, in accordance with society's conventions by like following all of the yeah. rules and decorum that had been decided for her. Um, so that would be a plus one. Yeah, in which case that is a neutral mm-hmm. result, which means there is no change to the College of Wizardry's okay. influence. We also have the otherworldly, but currently Kit is the only member of that. We didn't see Kit act publicly, right? Yeah. So in that case... Maybe that's a neutral since he didn't act pu- publicly in contravention or in accordance mm-hmm. with society's yeah. conventions. Yeah. At the end of the reputation phase, any faction member or leader may propose a decree for that faction if they are either authoritative or disgraced. Mm-hmm. Authoritative factions may make decrees that govern magic or magical creatures, while disgraced factions may make decrees that pertain to their members only. Mm -hmm. And these decrees have sort of the aim of reforming the behavior of members of that faction. Mm -hmm. Was there any decrees that you wanted to propose as a member of the College of Wizardry? Yes. The decree is that the new leader of the College of Wizardry should be decided by the council of current and past leaders as facilitated by Horatio. Ooh, I like that. That's good. So you should pop that onto Mm -hmm. the faction sheet. During the next reputation phase, a proposed decree may be passed if a faction's influence level remains unchanged and if the leader and at least one of its members supports the decree. So that wraps up the reputation phase and that's where we'll end it for today. I hope you've understood the rules explanations and changes from this video and I hope you enjoy playing your own games of Pride, Prejudice and Practical Magics.